Hello everyone, and welcome to the 11th devlog for Mini Golf Tycoon. I have gotten so much done these past two weeks, and I'm pretty excited to show you. I know this video is a little late, and with the pace the game is going at, I think I will switch to bi-weekly updates, at least for a little while since I am still making larger systems. Once I get back to making smaller content-based updates, I'll probably go back to once a week. But enough about all this, let's get into the devlog. Last week, I mentioned I needed to make the UI a little better, so I started on that. It looks a little cleaner and doesn't cover as much of the screen. It definitely isn't the finished look of the UI, but for now it's a little better. I also changed the panel for holes to have a white background, which looks nicer. I haven't done it to the other panels yet, but I probably will soon. Let's move on to a big thing that was really needed to make this game fun, Golf AI. This went through many iterations and is still far from perfect. It can play simple holes that don't have any elevation change. It can maneuver through curves, tunnels, and find the hole at the end. So let me show you how I did it. The first version I made was accidental triangulation, and by accidental I mean I just slapped some code down and it worked. Sort of. The AI worked, but it was very limited as it required to get all the nodes of the spline, which also meant it tried to go in order, so it would probably go backwards. But it works by rotating an object that shoots raycasts out of it, and those raycasts will hit the walls of the course. If those points on the wall are close enough to the next node of the spline, it was saved, and then an average point was found between all of those saved shots, which was then taken. It worked, but was not very versatile. So the next and final thing I tried was using reflection and raycast to detect where the hole or tunnel is and shoot along that rotation. Let's do a step-by-step -step rundown of how this works. The guests will start at the tee and spawn a ball. The AI object then rotates a full 360 degrees, shooting raycast out at every angle. These raycasts reflect along the walls and the amount of times they reflect is based on the guest skill level. If the raycast hits the hole or a tunnel, then it will save the rotation in a list, as well as a value based on how good the shot is. The value is calculated by getting the number of reflections left when the ray hit, so a higher value means a better shot usually. After these lists are created, it finds one with a high value and takes that shot at the safe position. Again, this AI isn't perfect and often misses. If it can't find a shot, it just aims at the hole directly, which usually gets the ball nowhere. And it does not work with elevation changes. And with this new AI, I also made a few other changes. The new hole button has been replaced by a big plus button next to the props, and the holes are actually created near where you're looking. And you can open and close your holes so guests know if they are ready to play. The next big system I decided to start was money. It had been long enough. A tycoon game isn't a tycoon game if there isn't money. So to start, I made each item's icon show its cost, as well as the name since I input both into the scriptable object. And I made a little box to show your money in the toolbar. Then I got to work making a system for adding money when a guest shows up or plays a hole, and subtracting it when you buy things if you have enough money. It was actually really easy, just simple static variable. And now that guests are actually important, I wanted them to show up more the more stuff you have to add a sense of progression. So I made this simple formula that I really need to change so these things influence the time a little less. With that out of the way, I realized that some people like having infinite money, so I wanted to make a sandbox mode. But what would be the point of toggling a sandbox mode in one game on and off? The money would no longer have a purpose. So I had to do something I've been meaning to do ever since I implemented saving. Save slots. Instead of just having one game you continually play, you can have multiple, each with its own name and file location. This took me a long time, not because I didn't know how to do it, but because it just takes a while. After I finished, I was very happy with how it turned out. And now instead of just a random file in the persistent data path for Mini Golf Tycoon, there is a new folder called Saves, which holds all of your different files. One of the days I was bored and wanted to make some clouds. I really wish I could have kept these in, even though in this clip I had been messing around with the settings so it didn't look very good. But the decrease in performance was pretty big, so I had to remove them. A whole two hours wasted. I'm going to add clouds back in, but not now. Speaking of performance, I actually decided to make occlusion colon a thing. After baking it in, I also figured out how to visualize it to show you. Basically, the game won't render any objects not in view of the camera, but to improve performance. The game could still do with some more optimization, but that will have to wait a little bit. I think I'll keep adding about a minute of gameplay at the end of every video to increase its length, so here's me making a nice little hole and the guest playing it.
think it's about time to end the video. I hope to see you again next time. Bye!